why don't I start speaking? So my name is Ida Tin. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Club. And as was mentioned in the introduction, this is a field that I've been thinking a lot about for six years. But actually, I've kind of been in a field um, study person for, I guess, 20 years, simply because I happen to have a uterus. Because um, this part of life is a big part of life for half of the world's population. Can I scroll here? No? Sorry, guys. This is a little bit annoying. Why don't I bring up my own computer? Then I can just speak from that. Is it good? Okay. Okay. Now I just need to get to my own presentation. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You okay, cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to tell you about why I am so passionate about data finding this part of life. So first of all, reproductive health is a completely foundational part of life, of course. It determines our health, our education, and a lot of other social complex structures, and of course the very basic number of how many people are we on this planet. But it's also a central part of life because it's very emotional. It's something which gives a big part of our human experience. We have questions about, am I normal? Am I healthy? Have I gotten pregnant? All of these things. So some of the biggest and kind of most deeply connected things to who we are Sex, love, identity, family. And also, reproductive health is something that has been majorly governed by the culture we live in, the time we live in. Um, and women's lives are totally influenced by what the world thinks about her sexual health. It's also a part of life that has very extreme impact on our lives if we don't manage it well. Like this poor lady who had seven children during the Depression. Now, this was 100 years ago in the States. Luckily, we're not there anymore there, but we are many other parts of the world. So, no matter what life you have as a woman, managing reproductive health is something that you have to do for 40 years of your life. Because, after all, we are biological creatures, no matter whether you are the woman to the left or the woman to the right. But female health is also a massive business. The, the, the amount of money that we spend in private and public health that goes to female health is huge. It's a very expensive system to keep running this thing we have in us. And the list of products within female health is just like endless. There is so much that we women do to keep our system running. Anything from infertility treatment to um, birth, pregnancy, imbalances with our hormonal system, hormonal system, and so on. The list goes on. So why is data about her so interesting and valuable? Well, the data about the cycle carries a wealth of information. It tells us about health, it tells us about fertility, infertility, and many other things. And in fact, I didn't know this until recently, but the cycle is actually listed as one of the vital signs of the body. So when you go into an emergency room, they will look, is your heart beating? Are you breathing? Or is your heart beating? Are you breathing? But also they will figure out whether you have cycles because it says a lot about your general health. And then there's one more aspect. So when you start collecting data about your body as a woman, it empowers you make, to make decisions about your health. It helps you make decisions about babies. It makes you uh, able to make decisions together with your doctor about treatment. So it's something that empowers you to kind of navigate life, really. Because it is a very eventful journey. <laughs> so when you start 
as a young woman, you start out not being fertile, then you go into being fertile, maybe you try for a baby, maybe you try avoiding pregnancies with the mishaps. In America, one out of three women go through an abortion, so there's a lot of mishaps. Um, trying for a baby, 15% of all couples have infertility problems, so there's a lot of mishaps there too. And then, of course, pregnancies where there are also mishaps. So there's a lot of, go, a lot of things going on all the way till you then eventually go through menopause. And then there's all the additional data points in between. Um, because women have a lot of other maintenance stuff going on. <laughs> like cyst, 15% of women have cysts. They cause a lot of pain. Or people who have hormones going all over the place. And this is just a few examples. The list is very long. So there's a lot of data. And there's a big need for data. To navigate this part of life, to understand the individual body, because every single body has its own patterns that are a little bit different, and to make matters even more complicated, the body changes. So we never really exactly figure it out. So we need data to help us. And so why is now such an interesting time? Well, because we have this fascinating combination of technologies. We have the computing power, we can do analysis on the data. We have the sensor and the variable technologies. We all have it in our mobile phones. And billions of people have this in their phones. And that's a new thing. And it's extremely powerful. So when we combine all this data, we can move science forward, which I'm personally very excited about. We can also do predictive analytics. We can do very advanced risk profiling, which is interesting for something like breast cancer. Mm, and we can give insights and we can call to action so that people can actually see, aha, this is what's going on, now I know what to do. And that's what I call datafying female health. So it's not about turning something that was analog before into digital. It's about taking a whole new part of life and turning it into data points. And that's what's so empowering. So basically, collecting data is incredibly important and powerful for the individual woman, but also for society. I think it's fair to say that we are in the middle of a global social movement. Um, I think we are slowly but surely moving out of taboo land. And instead understanding that the cycle carries all this information which we can integrate into all kinds of parts of life. Um, and this is truly empowering. And having data is also about including the men and facilitating the conversation between genders. It's the conversation about how do we get pregnant, how do we avoid getting pregnant, but it's also about allowing men to just know what the heck is going on. And a lot of men do want to know, I find. <laughs> so all of this is what we're working on at Clue, and we have built an app that enables users to collect data related to her cycle to understand her body. And everything we do has a very solid scientific foundation. That's important. Um, we also try, of course, to make the app super easy to use, fast. It's built for very rapid data entry um, and enjoyable to use. And definitely nothing pink and flowery in my secret diary. This is just another part of life. Um, we also have a lot of informational content in the app, which actually tells people what is going on in their biological system. Because again, most people, they actually don't remember what they learned at school, if they ever learned it. Um, we are on iOS, Apple, and Android. Um, sorry, Apple Watch and Android. We are in 10 languages, and we have a new version coming out in a few weeks, which has an additional 20 tracking categories, so we can get much more granular in the kind of data that we can help women collect. Um, we're collaborating with Columbia University, Stanford Universities, and others um, to move 
science forward and do studies around the cycle. You would not believe how many blank areas there are on the academic map of what's actually going on for half of the world's population. It's really fascinating. So, <laughs> the app has been downloaded more than um, 3 million times from 180 countries, and we're growing super fast, which is, of course, very nice. I put this quote in here because we literally get quotes like this every single day. We know that understanding female health is major. We also know that we have so much work ahead of us. So my vision for Clue is that we can generate or create a hub for all this kind of female health-related data so that we can get to personalized predictions that are so accurate that we can call it a data-driven contraceptive. And a modern alternative to the pill and so much more. We're not quite there yet. Some of our competitors say they are. I don't say that. We're not quite there yet. But we are also not so far off. So, thank you for listening, even though there was a little bit of a clunky start. <laughs> I want to say that I'm only an email away if you have comments or if you think that we should be working together. And I also want to just bring out here that we're searching for a CTO. So if you feel the calling, want to change family planning globally, <laughs> or know somebody that you think want to join our awesome team in Berlin, drop me a line. Um, that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>